Okay, so nothing beats having direct eye contact with your audience, whether that's on a Zoom call or a Teams call. If you're streaming or on a podcast, you want to be able to look directly in the lens the whole time. The problem is there's probably something going on on your screen. For example, if you're on a Teams call and you want to see content or other speakers, you might have to look down on your screen, which kind of looks like this, and then you're not paying attention to the people that you're actually presenting to. And you can see that as I look down, I'm actually losing contact with you every second that I look down. Now, there's an option to retain both of those, and it actually doesn't involve a teleprompter, and you can use a camera like this, which basically hangs down over your screen when you need it, and can also tuck back up into the normal webcam position when you don't. So this is what's called the Eye Contact Camera Pro, and it's a 4K camera. I'm gonna film the entire video using it, and like the name says, it's actually built to improve eye contact during your video calls or streams. And I'm looking right at the center of my monitor, and I kid you not, I'm even using its built-in microphone, which is about a meter or three and a half feet from my mouth. So this is a legitimate test. And before I begin, let me just say that this video is in no way sponsored. I paid for this camera with my own money, so the opinions are completely mine. I don't have a discount code or anything in the description but there are links of where you can find it. Now, if you're a super avid follower for my channel, you might remember that I briefly, like for two days, put up a review of a webcam that dropped out in front of the frame, like this one, for better eye contact. Well, it turns out that camera was copying a patented design and the inventor actually of the eye contact webcam reached out to me to let me know and actually unlisted that other video. Now, those guys also even stole eye contact's images. They lied about the camera being a 4K resolution camera. It was actually just 1080p. So pretty shady stuff. And this one, the real one, the eye contact camera pro, is capable of more than 4K at 3840 by 3104 pixel resolutions. So shout out to the inventors and founders out there who are going against all the established players and also fending off those massive uh, knockoff market competitors that are out there trying to find all the great ideas that we have. So now you've seen its image, you, you're hearing the microphone right now. Let me show you a few things in terms of the hardware design. So first, in the camera up mode, it kind of looks like a normal webcam, except the sensor and lens is poking out of the right side of it so that it's not covering your screen. Then once you're ready to use the camera, there's a nice spring-assisted downward hinge for when you're on camera, and it's also spring-assisted on the upswing as well. Now, what I thought would happen is that the image would be level in the up position, then detect it was hinged down and automatically rotate that image 90 degrees, but it doesn't do that, which kind of makes sense because if it did do that, I think a lot of people would probably just leave it in the up position and rarely hinge the camera back down, which kind of defeats the purpose. Now the good news about that is that if you are creating vertical videos, for example, you can put the eye contact camera in the up position, film that way in your set. Now the other part of the hardware that I really like is that this webcam actually has a cold shoe on top. I've never seen that before actually on a webcam, which you could use then for other accessories like a light or maybe a shotgun microphone. Now the USB cable is unfortunately fixed on the back of the camera. It's about two meters long or six feet, six inches and it terminates to a USB-C. And on the plus side, there's a USB-C to USB-A adapter that's included in the box. And speaking of the box, it's actually a really nice bit of packaging that it comes with very uh, Apple-esque or similar to Apple packaging, if you're used to that, in terms of the materials and the weight of the cardboard and the coloring and the fonts, etc. So back on the camera though, the monitor is very solid. It even feels like it's weighted so that you can confidently hinge the camera up and down without having to worry about the camera moving on your monitor. And the camera body itself, though, I'd say it's a little bit plasticky feeling, but more or less in line with the rest of the 4K webcams that are out there. Okay, so how does it perform, though, as a camera? Well, it's quite good. It's not perfect, but it's very solid. I couldn't find any information on the sensor size itself. I'm guessing, though, it's similar to, say, a Logitech Brio 4K sensor. Given the small footprint of the camera and the part that hinges up and down, you know, honestly, you don't want a sensor that's too big on this camera or it will cover up too much of your screen. So it's a great trade-off in terms of the quality of the image and the size of the camera so it doesn't cover up too much of your screen. That does, however, mean that the smaller sensor needs more light. And in my darker setup, 
I have a bit of noise behind me, you can see from the camera, but it's pretty good. And again, I'd say it's comparable to something like the Logitech Brio 4K in terms of noise level using the exact same conditions. Now, what I really like about this webcam is that uh, eye contact actually lit up almost all of the UVC webcam controls for Windows. On a lot of webcams, you're lucky if you see brightness, contrast, saturation, sharpness, and white balance. Rarely do you see things like hue in gamma controls. And, and in the camera control tab, you can see that zoom also works, which lets you zoom in and out, of course. And that's good, and that's also good for manual focus, so you can actually check focus while zooming in. And one thing I'd recommend actually is to use manual focus if you see that there's a bit of focus breathing on the camera, which I experienced a little bit of myself. And if you're zoomed in, pan and zoom also works and roll comes in handy if, say, you want to flip the image and see it in mirrored mode, or you want to flip it upside down, maybe you want to mount the camera on the hot shoe upside down, you can do that with roll. Now the exposure controls are there, but like with a lot of different webcams, I don't recommend that you use them because it will actually slow the camera down quite a bit. And in my experience, it actually made the image quite dark and I couldn't get it as high as the auto exposure. Okay, so now we've made it this far. Let's have a look at what the tune settings look like on the camera. Then what I want to do is actually turn off the various tune settings so that you can see what it looks like by default. So remember these numbers, I've got brightness at zero. Contrast is at 32. I've got hue at minus 62, saturation at 75, sharpness at 2, gamma is at 100. I do like my shadows. The white balance, because this camera is so well calibrated, is at 5000 Kelvins, exactly the Kelvin temp of my lights, by the way. Uh, backlight comp is at zero, and uh, power line flicker, I believe, is at 60 hertz by default for American market. But I didn't actually set it. Now on the back uh, tab here with camera control, typically these, a lot of these are, all of these are grayed out, a lot of cameras almost. Um, aperture is the only one that's grayed out here. I've got zoom set to zero. If I zoom in, for example, the nice thing is I can use that in combination with my focus. So I've got focus at 182. So I'll go back to somewhere around the same value. I'll we'll probably go to 182 again and I can move back in. I'll leave it zoomed a little bit because then I can use that to show pan and tilt. I have pan and tilt, you can see I've got 23 and then I can move it back and forth. You don't have to pay attention to these numbers though, if zoom is set to zero because basically um, that only works when the zoom is actually in a little bit so you can move between that zoomed in frame. Now roll is nice uh, if you want to say flip or mirror the image so as you go between them, I mirror flip there. If I want to go upside down, I can do that and I can mirror flip upside down as well but the default is three. Uh, this doesn't actually rotate the image for the cases, for example, when the hinge is up. All right, so now that I've shown you kind of all the different tune settings, let me go ahead and show you um, what it looks like when I go into default. So I'm gonna go back to the video proc amp tab and the UVC controls, and um, I will set this to defaults, which the button is here a little bit hidden. There you go, and it goes a little bit desaturated, if I'm honest, you can kind of see the image change quite a bit. It's still pretty accurate. It's a little bit on the kind of greener side. Now I'm going to go ahead and change to defaults on zoom, focus, and exposure. It doesn't really change anything because I had, you know, focus more or less. Um, I not an autofocus, but manual. If I go to autofocus, you can see it starts to do a little bit of focus breathing. Not too badly, but uh, it's there. And uh, in terms of the default image out of the camera, it's a bit on the desaturated side. All right, so now let me go into the microphone. So just to show you the microphone that's turned on, yes, I do have eye contact camera microphone. I think you probably believe me because it is a little bit echoey. But just to go into the filters, I have a three band equalizer here. The highs are up just 3 dB, the mids 1.9, the lows at 0.9. So not a lot of equalization that's on there, but I'll turn that off. If I go into the compressor, these are all the standard compressor settings. Uh, out of the box from OBS, so I'll turn that off to hear what that sounds like. And now I'll turn the limiter off as well. The limiter is on its kind of normal settings by default, minus 6 dB and 60 milliseconds. And I do have the uh, speaks noise suppression turned on. There are a couple different options I have here, but I'll just turn that off, I guess, in my case. And there we go. So now I've got the uh, microphone at its complete defaults, no equalizer, no compressor, no limiter, no noise suppression. So I'll close that down and you can see and you can also hear what this microphone looks like and what it sounds like. 
So now let me know what you think. My assessment is I really like this camera. The eye contact part is great. I've been looking at my monitor the entire time. The microphone is one of the best I've tested in a webcam. I would say maybe the BenQ S10 Pro webcam at about six inches from my mouth is a little better, but this microphone in the Eye Contact Pro is about four feet away from my mouth and it still sounds pretty good with just a little bit of echo. The only criticism I can give it is that the smaller sensor is more prone to noise in the background, especially than a larger sensor camera would be. But I think they've nailed it in terms of the trade-off of not making the camera too big or covering up too much of the screen with a smaller size so that it's kind of not in your way. And I'd probably play if it were me with a background blur at a very low setting to emulate something like a low aperture lens, like an f1.4 or 1.8 lens. And I'd love to see if, uh, or maybe a software update or a redesign, if they can get to 60 frames per second at 1080p resolutions. But that said, Microsoft Teams or Zoom and those kind of remote calling solutions, they typically won't give you any better resolution than 1080p at 30 frames per second. So going to 60 frames is not a real issue there. So would I recommend it? Uh, yes. Yeah. So if you're a manager, you work in maybe an HR capacity, human resources, and you interview a lot of people, you need something like this. Also, you know, for things like telemedicine or remote video consultation, those types of things, you know, it's, it's great to have a teleprompter if you know how to use them or if you're used to looking at the lens of the camera. Um, but this kind of does that for you. So you don't need a second device. You don't need a second microphone. So I guess the other question you're probably wondering is, will I switch to this as my primary camera for YouTube? Honestly, I'd say no. And the reason why I would say no is because I've got full-size Sony cameras that will produce better images. But each of those cameras, one of them's probably around $1,200 for everything, the lens, the camera, the capture card, the other one's maybe around $1,400 to do that. So you're not gonna compete with a $170 camera versus say a 12 or $1,400 camera setup using a proper camera with a large sensor. Um, but you know, I doubt the average person is gonna wanna spend that much money on a proper camera with a capture card, a dummy battery, lens, etc. So for $170 or so, I'd probably give the image quality maybe an eight out of 10. Given the distance I am away, I'd say this microphone's probably a nine out of 10 uh, versus other webcam mics that I've tried. In the eye contact, I would say for the profession that you're in, like the ones I mentioned, telemedicine, consultation, interviewing, etc., is more or less priceless. So yes, even though it's a bit more than say a 2017 model Logitech Brio 4K webcam, I would still recommend this one. And I would say it's, it's a great camera on a budget to achieve great eye contact, pretty good video and pretty good audio without having to buy a bunch of different accessories. So hopefully this test helps you make better eye contact with people that you're presenting with or presenting to. And if you liked the test that I'm doing right now, be sure to give me a like, subscribe to my channel, and as always, thank you for watching.